Just let's breathe. Mm. Thank you, Lord, for breath. Dear Most High God, how we bless you on today. How we thank you for this day that we'd never see before and never see again. We thank you for new mercies on this day, Lord. We just thank you for the opportunity to come from wherever we came, from cross town, from our homes, from work, where we can just come in and feed on your word, Lord. We thank you for each and every person that is here, Father. We just ask right now that you clear their minds and their hearts, Father, to focus on you, Lord. We came to lift you up. We came to relate to each other. We came to meet new friends. We came to have fun in you, Lord. So we thank you, Father, that you have, we have this opportunity to do that. In Jesus' name we pray, amen. 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 Okay. Hmm. Who has books? Who has books? Only one, two, three. Okay, 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 okay. So I'm gonna go ahead and I'm gonna I'm gonna do what I can do. This is lesson session one, and we're gonna be talking about God the Creator. Our Bible study story is uh, David praised God, the Creator, coming out of Acts, 13th chapter, 21st through the 23rd verse, and also Psalm 104. And our point for today is that God is the marvelous creator. And he did great, because look at all of us. You know, sometimes I walk through the mall and I'd be like, everybody's a different shape. Everybody a different size, they got different nose, different mouth, and we be tripping because we don't look like the other person. And so our bonus verse today is Psalms 104. And 24. What I'm going to do, um, because of we don't have all the books right now, I'm going to just go ahead and read through the background. Does everybody have paper? Does everybody have a pen? Okay, you need a pen? Uh, I brought some. Okay. And I have on the sides here, too, I have... Okay. read, I'm going to try and read, I'm not going to read too fast, I'm not going to read too slow, but there may be something that you hear, because the scriptures that I'm going to be reading from, or the story that I'm going to be reading from, you're going to see it again, because it's in your booklet. And so just think of, uh, just if there's something just hits your ear and you'll be like, mmm, just write it down, okay? So the Bible background, we're talking about the introduction. It is wonderful to spend time in nature. The cold, exhilarating snow of the winter, the fresh mountain air in the springtime, the summer ocean breeze, and the beautiful fall colors gives us opportunity to experience God's, God's handiwork. When we see the varieties of birds, the colorful insects, the delicate flowers, and the powerful creative, creative creation God has made, we understand that he is infinitely intelligent, loving, and mighty, Studying our world shows us that the powerful power he possessed to create also holds everything together. Even more amazing, our infinite and marvelous creator sacrificed so that we can have a personal relationship with him for eternity. When, we, when God created Adam and Eve, he said, it was very good indeed. However, it did not take long for them to disobey him which brought the curse of sin to the entire human race. After mankind had sinned, God used the imperfect nation of Israel as part of his plan to bring our promised Messiah, Jesus, into the world to save us. King David's leadership was part of that plan. 
David recognized that God is the creator, the ruler, and the sustainer of all, and it led him to worship God as creator. We can learn a lot from King David about how we should worship and relate to God. David understood his place in creation, and he celebrated God as the king of the universe. God created David to be a king, but God is the true king of everything. So when we look at Acts 13, 21 through 23, it talks about how God worked through David as a part of his plan to bring Jesus. So from the beginning of creation, God was all, has always been in control and working to bring about redemption for his creation. The Bible is one beautiful, seamless tapestry weaving God's plan of redemption and restoration for his creation despite their sinfulness. We see in the Old Testament that God intended for Israel was for them to be set apart from the nation around them. God wanted to be their king, but the people rejected God and demanded that they have a human king like the pagan nations around them. So God gave them Saul as king, a man of impressive physical stature. Despite his physical qualities, Saul showed a perpetual lack of faith in God and regard for following God and his commands. This resulted in God removing Saul and commanding his prophet Samuel to anoint David as Israel's next king. David did not possess the physical qualities Saul did when he was anointed, but God chose David not for what others saw in him, but what, what God saw, a man after his own heart, godly, selfless, character and discipline, obedience, as far more important measure of leadership to the Lord than the outward appearance the world pursues. This brief summary of Israel history demonstrates the step-by-step -step unfolding of God's plan that was realized in King David, but later fulfilled in the promise of the son of David, Jesus himself. God worked through David's life as a part of the redemptive story, but David was not the culmination of the story. David was carried out God's will David would carry out God's will for his part in the story. Jesus would fulfill it. So then we're also going to look at Psalms 104, and we're going to look at that throughout this week. And Psalm 104 stands as evidence, evidence of David's deep love of God and his devotion to him. When David looked at the beauty of creation, he understood that God was demonstrating his infinite power and care to humanity. But even more than enjoy the creation God made, God wants us to see and know him through the world he made. He intends for creation to point us deeper to a deeper, deeper love for him. So when we look at Psalms 104, one through one, one through four, it talks about God as the infinite creator and sustainer, the Holy Spirit. Hmm. led David to begin his songs with a majestic description of God. He describes God's clothing as majestic and splendor. Notice that King David used very specific language in these first four verses that describe the majesty of kingship. He wrapped himself in light. It's a remnant of many descriptions of God as light throughout his word. It also reminds us that Jesus is the light of the world. David's description of fire and wind and clouds all gave credits to the immeasurable power and glory of God. King David recognized his place before God, the true king of everything. He gave it credence to the immeasurable power and glory of God. Psalms 104, 5 and through 9 tells us that God established the earth and controls the water. David gave some fascinating language 
In these verses, to describe God's authority and the reliability of the world God made through the third day of creation. First, we see that God established the earth and that it would never be shaken. This is a reference to God's stability over his creation. As we read, we can also visualize God distinguishing boundaries of land from the water that covers the face of the earth. We see God's continuing care of his creation and the psalmist's worship of, of the God who established control and sustains all things. Then we're going to walk through Psalms 104, 10 through 30. And it talks about God's love and provides for his creation. Recognizing the God of creation led David to worship God for all the ways he provides for his creation. The water God made provides life to every creature, the grass, the trees, and all creatures that live on land or in water belong to the Lord and depend on him. He provides for them and they all exist to give him glory. People are also God's creation. He loves and provides for us. We are made to worship God. We are made to worship God. What is our purpose? We are made to worship God. I don't know why the Lord got me there because a lot of times people say, I don't know my purpose. Your purpose, you are made to worship God. Hmm. Ooh, that's powerful. People, also, people are also God's creation, and he loves and provides for us. Um... Like David, as we recognize who God is in and through his creation, it should lead us to a deeper worship, humility, and gratitude for who God is and how he loves us. Almost there. God's power hmm. and love. And that's going to be Psalms 104, 31 through 35. This psalm culminates in a heartfelt praise to God when David realized who God is and all he has done. When he realized who God is and all he has done. If you think over the last three years of who God is and what he has done, I, I, I get excited just knowing that I'm still here. So David summarizes his observation about God and creation in verses 31 through 32. May the glory of the Lord endure forever. May the Lord rejoice in his works. He looks at the earth and trembles. He touches the mountains and they pour out smoke. Consider the majesty of God as the earth itself responds to God, the creator. David modeled the response we should have as God's people. Observing God's creative and sustaining power should lead us to rejoice in who God is. Who is God to you? We should ask God to give us hearts of worship and, live, and lives that influence others for his glory. Who are you influencing in your life? We should also long and pray for Jesus' return. When he will remove sin, injustice, and sadness, and make all things new again. That is the introduction to all the scriptures and all the sections that will be read. Go ahead. I just want to, I don't know if this is on, take a little bit of time to uh, bring this on home to, to everybody's listening and everybody's listening to what David and Saul went through and, and how God interacted. So let's break it down to make it uh, more today, okay? David would carry out God's will for his part of the story. Y'all notice his part. Not everybody's part, his part. 
What would have happened if he hadn't have done his part? Somebody. Come on, guys, don't let me pick. You know I would pick. I don't know if anybody was in our class before. What would have happened if David wouldn't have done his part? I'm sorry, repeat it now. Okay. So what happens then if God gives you something to do and you think, oh, I'm not prepared to do that. I'm inferior. I can't do that. And he's counting on you to do your part. What happens to his plan when he's counting on you to do your part, no matter how insignificant? There you go. That's right. We can't hear you. And the plan can't move forward according, according to God's will. And oftentimes, that's what happens. We lack the courage, although we have the faith, we lack the courage based on our spirit man, what we want to do and what we feel that we can't do. If God says, I need you to bring 10 souls to me, or I need you to help with kingdom building in your church, or I'm going to assign you a mission or so forth, then souls could be lost. And actually, that's just being disobedient to the word of God. Anybody else? I was just going to say that as I think about that question as my part, if I don't do my part, then there is a delay or a possibility then that God, as some stories in the Bible, like what Moses said, well, I can't really talk. So then God then says, okay, I'm going to send someone else. But God always has someone else to help you when you don't feel quite strong enough mm -hmm. to carry out your particular, not that your part is not going to be done, but at that particular time, He's saying, okay, well, I don't think that I can do it. So he's saying, okay, well, I've got somebody else to help you along your journey. Mm -hmm. So I think when we don't do our part, it then delays what the actual purpose of what God is trying to then bring forth, you know, and delays our blessing on top of that. That's it right there. Does everybody agree they all <laughs> have a part? Yes. Everybody got a part. So when God asks you to do something, He's counting on you to do what? Your part. One more, and then I'm going to give it back to Reverend McLean. Uh, where was it? He intends for creation. Now, we were talking, Reverend McLean was talking about how beautiful the creation is, and you know when you look outside, you see the birds in the sky and the flowers and everything. His creation is something to marvel at. The, the sunset, something to marvel at. The sunrise, something to marvel at. But he says he intends for his creation to point us to a deeper love for him. To not just admire it and say, oh, how beautiful, how wonderful. Thank you, God, for letting me see it. But when you see it, think of him. Think of him. Think, don't just see it and admire it. Everything points back to, oh, I did this. I want you to look at it. It's important that you look at it. I made it so you can marvel at the beauty of it. Okay? And then last and not least, I'm going to give it back to you, Ron McLean, is that he, we, we recognize who God is and through his creation, and it leads us to deeper worship, deeper humanity and gratitude. We all worship him. We all go to church. We all understand what the preacher is talking about. We have a good time. But what his creation does on top of that is tells us really, really appreciate it. Really appreciate those flowers. How many people just look at the clouds and say, oh, that is, that's a beautiful day. Look at the clouds in the sky. That's what he wants you to do. 
He made it for you to marvel at. But when you marvel at it, he wants you to think about him. Think about what he did that. He did that for you to look at and say, oh, how beautiful. Okay. I'm going to turn back. Oh, okay. All right. Thanks for that. <clears throat> I was thinking about when I went to, um, it wasn't, it was before you got, get to Baton, Baton Rouge, Louisiana. It's a, yeah, but it's a town begins with an M. Metairie? Who? Metairie? Metairie? Just before more New Orleans? No, 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 no. It's before you get the, oh, the before Baton you Rouge. get Baton Rouge. It begins with an M, ever who's from there. And we went there, to, uh, and the landscape and the, the colors, and, what is it called? Your yeah, mama, that's it. Mama. <laughs> no, I, mama. Well, I didn't want to look. I didn't want to mess mama. it up. I didn't want to mess it up. <laughs> But it was gorgeous just to see the water because you could be driving and you look to the side and it was a swamp there, you know, and it was stuff that you did not expect to see. It was just beautiful. And I was like, you know, we, we serve an awesome God. And then sometimes I'd be like, I want to I wanna live over there and I would like to live over there just because of how beautiful it looks. So we have an amazing God. All right, go on. we're going to go to this part quickly. Um, I apologize that everybody doesn't have a book, but you do have paper, so we could kind of do that, this, what we're going to do. Um, and I know we're still kind of eerie about uh, with the mask and whatever, but you can sit your distance. I gave, everybody has three numbers. You have one, two, or three. Um, so I want all the ones together, all the twos together, all the threes, not yet together, and those people that have a book, we're gonna be on page three. At least we're gonna try and get a couple activities done. Page three, and it says, session one, God the creator. B Bible passage, David praised God the creator, and that's Acts 13, 21 through 23, and I, and I spoke about that earlier. And it says, God creation shows his majesty. Instructions, work with your small group to think about your top five examples of things in nature that show the power and the majesty of God. Write your answers in the boxes. So people that have paper, you can make some little boxes. They don't have to be perfect. It could be whatever how you want those boxes to be made when you get that group, as long as you have some boxes. And choose someone from the group to present your conclusion and make a case for why your group's examples are the best. Okay? So all the ones, so if you have a one over here, if you have a two back there, and if you have a three over here, ones, twos, threes. This is to get us moving. This is to get your chance to meet someone new and different. And then you guys got to select who's going to present. Oh, you got three. <laughs> You're welcome. One, two, and three. Three is over here. Cheryl is going to, uh, you need another pen. <laughs> One, twos, and threes. The person uh, that went over there never found Cheryl, so Cheryl is sending some. Okay. The top five examples of things in nature that show the power and majesty of God. You're going to write your answers in the boxes and then choose someone from the group oh, thank to come up and tell why your selections is the best. Okay? Okay, so after that... Um uh, excuse me, y'all. Did everybody get the chance to sign the attendance sheet? Anybody that did not, raise your hand. Okay. We're going to give you about six minutes. So that means y'all going to be talking quick and to the point. <laughs>
Okay. Are we good? Okay. All right. So we're going to go start with group three. And who's going to be our person who's going to do the presentation? Woohoo! And you are who? New to this. Her name is New to This. And I heard some really good stories. Okay, so you're ready. you're ready to listen up, group one and two, to group three. To the, uh, her name is New to This. <laughs> good, um, good evening. My name is Keisha Foster, and I was telling them I'm new to this. I've never, in my 47 years, actually went to a vocational Bible study. I've heard stories, <laughs> but I have never actually... And to, truth be told, I didn't even know this was vocational Bible study. I just know they said, bring your family. And I was like, <laughs> my daughter, my seven-year-old likes church. So I was like, okay, this is something we can do since it's summertime. Okay, so I was working with this group of wonderful, wonderful women with a really good spirit. I can already feel it in group three. And this was very easy um, for them. So um, we talked about the five things. Um, so we, number one was the birds. So you can hear the birds in the morning. You can hear the birds at night. You, um, there, and we said that they're being provided for. They're being provided for with us, with the bird fees, and they're being provided by whatever God has created in this world. Um, you just see them happy. You don't see them fighting, um, singing to us. Um, it's soothing, it's calming, so it gives you peace. Then um, we talked about the trees. I was a little concerned about the trees because I have a tree that's messing up my plumbing. <laughs> but my sister here made me see it in a whole different light. Um, and that was, this, the part that made me just think about it was that um, it starts in a dark place. It's a foundation and it grows to be something wonderful, magnificent, what is the word? Ma uh, yeah, all those M's. <laughs> um, and it's strong, and it's where every, and it has those roots, so it's your foundation. Yeah. So that was number two. Um, and then, I'm sorry, oh, so the sun, that was mine. I have a seven-year-old who sees the world very differently from everyone else. In my 47 years, I've never seen the sun like she does. Um, when it comes up in the morning, um, it, she gave it a, um, a gender, so it's her. If it's cloudy and rainy, she's like, she didn't wake up yet, mama, where is she? Uh, we need to wake her up. And even when it's going down and the moon is coming up, she's ready, she's like, okay, the sun is gonna sleep so she can come up in the morning so I can have a beautiful day. <laughs> so that sun is good. Um, and then we have birth. Um, we, and we talked about birth, birth with animals um, and people. It's just something that's beautiful God has created for us um, and we keep creating more beautiful things um, with birth. Um, did I miss something on that one? Okay, yeah. All right, and um, weather. Never thought of this one. I'm gonna look at weather a whole different way. All these natural disasters that we speak of. Um, this is Mother Nature um, telling us that we need to appreciate what God has created. We need to do better making sure that we take care of this place where God um, has placed us to live and to grow as people. Did I get that? Okay. All right. That's our top five. Awesome. Yeah, give her a hand. Awesome. Everybody. Okay. Who over here is our spokesperson? Not everybody at one time. Come on. Come on. Okay. Um, we talked about trees as well. Who's the spokesperson? And my experience was that I was sitting in my... Um, uh, breakfast area, and there was several bare trees uh, that day, and next day I looked out, they was basically full, and it just marveled, it was just marvelous just to see how quick and how 
suddenly God seemed to have filled those trees. And, and I was amazed at how full they were at the time, uh, like a day or two, you know. And we talked about the, the trees being filled and showing God's power. Would you mind walking up to the front? Oh. <laughs> Thank you. I didn't know I was going to. Stand right here. I don't. I know. I know. <laughs> okay. And one of the young ladies talked about snow, and how brilliant it was, uh, and the beauty of it, and how the flake seems to form their own, you know, method of of uh, togetherness. And she she also said, then the next day. It might rain, and it's gone, you know, and, and, and the beauty of how God brings it, and he takes it away. And uh, someone talked about the rainbows and the stars, and we talked about the double rainbow. I don't know if anyone ever seen a double rainbow. Awesome, beautiful, and that was the promise of God, you know, and I guess the double rainbow is like his double promise. And um, one young lady talked about fire and that it is powerful, that the fire is powerful. And it also has brilliant colors in the fire. You have different colors in the fire as well. And one, the other young lady spoke about being at a park and seeing the ducks and the birds and all of a sudden getting a gentle breeze that comes along. So I think that's about all we talked about. I think that's five. Okay. Very good. <laughs> Give them a hand. Oh, so no one else stood up here. <laughs> right here. I guess there it is. You know, God is good because we were right on target. Everything that groups one and two said, we actually said the same thing, but just a little bit of a spin on it. And so um, I love the part of the northern lights, how God can take some stars and make shapes that if you really stop and take a look at them, you marvel at the majesty of his creation. And then we talked about the sunrise and the sunset, how if you wake up early enough in the morning, you can actually see God take that big, huge ball of fire and set it out there over the, the horizon, be it on water or land, and it never burns anything. And then at the end of the day when he wants us to rest, he calms it down like your daughter said. That was beautiful. And then the discovery channel, and I love this. If you have a chance to look at how new creations, creations are made through volcanoes, how they erupt in that powerful, powerful push of elevation of lava that is hot and dangerous, but when it cools down, you have new land mass formed. And then diamonds are created through all of that power. And so we talked about plants and those delicate intricate patterns that grow from seeds or from roots in the ground because we are the roots of God's creation. And so when you're tending your garden, you actually come to peace with everything that surrounds you from a blade of grass to the most beautiful rose. I, I really want somebody to come help me with my shrubs in my yard after hearing that because that was really good. And then this one was so powerful, storms, how the lightning and the wind and the rain, and when it's over, there's peace and there's, there's calm, letting us know that God has a plan for everything in our lives each and every day, that we wake up and we go to sleep, God's plan is in action and he needs us there for those new beginnings and those rough endings, it's always that cycle, just like the ocean. 
it's calm and it's smooth at times. And then the wind comes and it may wash everything away that's given us trials and tribulations. And then it's calm again so that we can go out into the water. Think about baptism. Let me stop. <laughs> you know, I can go. No, I know you can go. Thank you. <laughs> Oh, I know you can go. Thank you so much, ladies. You did a wonderful, wonderful job on actually um, looking at God's creation and how it shows his majesty. Okay. So uh, I need to get three readers. Three readers. You can either have your Bible or you can have your phone. Just three readers. Anybody? Okay, there's one. Come up. Can I get one from each group? That would be perfect. Okay. One from the back. Just to read. Not to, not to talk. Just to read. Come on. Sure, sure. You can stand here or anywhere you want. Okay. Okay. Do I need my book? Uh, my book? No, no. Just, okay. just, just. Okay, if you would read Acts 13, verses 21 to 23, if you would read Psalm 104, 1 through 4, and then we'll pause, and then it'll be 104, 5 through 9. 104, 1 through 4, and then... Pause and then read 104, 5 through 9. Now, this is on your book on page 7 is what we're doing. Okay. If you would read 104, 10 through 30, and then 104, 31 to 35. 10 through 30, and then we'll pause, and then 104, uh, 31 to 35. Okay? You ready? Yes. Okay, so Acts 13, verses 21 to 23. I want you to listen closely to what is being read, and I want you to put your own ideas on paper as to how you perceive that scripture, okay? okay. Put your own ideas in there. Okay, here we go. And afterward, they desired a king... And God gave unto them Saul, the son of Sais, a man of the tribe of Benjamin, by the space of 40 years. And when he had removed him, he raised up unto them David to be their king, to whom also he gave testimony and said, I have found David, the son of Jesse, a man after mine own heart, which shall fulfill all my will. Of this man's seed hath God, according to his promise, raised unto Israel a Savior, Jesus. No, it was uh, Acts 21 to 23. Okay, I'm sorry. Okay, thank you. Okay. You can be seated. Okay. okay, so I want you to write down what you got out of that. Did everybody write it down? This was Acts 13, 21 to 23. Right. What did you get out of it? Because I'm going to ask you some questions. Okay, the first question is, why do you think most people tend to look at the outside of a person instead of the inside? Why do you think that? Anybody? Okay. Let me come over there. What did you say? So yes, I'm yes, that it's easy. So if it looks nice, you're like, oh, that's great. But you don't actually know what's going on inside. Okay. Someone over here? Stand up. It's easy to see what's on the outside, but you can't see what, what's on the inside. So, so why is that easier for you? Uh, well, 
it's the physical. You're seeing with your eyes, okay. but you can't see the heart. Okay. You know, very good, so. Very good. Anybody back there? Okay. All right, let's move on to the next one. Okay, so why do you think God looks at the heart instead? That's what matters. That's who you are. That's who he created. Okay. Anybody else? Uh, I think that's because God always takes the time to have a relationship with you. And so he can then know what your heart is really feeling versus just what he sees. You can see anybody at a distance and have no relationship with them. Mm -hmm. But once you have a relationship with someone... Now you begin to know what's really in their heart. Okay. What's in a person's heart is their true nature. The outside is just the appearance. It's the, it doesn't have the substance that the heart does. So why does God look at your heart? Is there anything that you can hide from him? So you can put on your mask all you want to in front of other people, right? But he sees everything, every hidden flaw. And so that's why he looks at the heart. Okay, so the next one is, why does God teach us? What does God teach us through his choice of David about the type of character that he was looking for. What did it teach us about David? Was David uh, all about himself? No. He was a guy after God's own heart because he believed in God and trusted in God. And he was obedient. And God knew he could trust him. Okay, so let's go on to Psalm 104, 1 through 9. Let all that I am praise the Lord. O Lord, my God, how great you are. You are robed with honor and majesty. You are dressed in a robe of light. You stretch out the starry curtains of the heavens. You lay out the rafters of your home in the rain clouds. You make the clouds your chariot. You ride upon the wings of the wind. I thought I said one through four. 104, one through nine. The wings are your messengers. Flames of fire are your servants. You place the world on its foundation so it would never be moved. You clothe the earth with floods of water, water that covers even the mountains. At your command, the waters fled at the sound of your thunder. It hurried away. Mountains rose and valleys sank to the levels you decreed. Then you set a firm boundary or the seas, so they would never again cover the earth. Okay. So have y'all been taking notes? Okay, so the question is, if God created everything, does that mean he, has, he also has the power to control everything today? If he created everything, does he have the power to control it today? And I think you guys were talking about it earlier, about the storms and, and the fires and everything. I think it was over here also. So does he control that? Can he control it? Is there anything out of his reach? Okay. So where was my reader? <laughs> okay. Uh, someone read uh, 104. 10 through 30, right quick. It makes springs pour water right. into the ravines. It flows between the mountains. They give water to all the beasts of the field, 
The wild donkeys quench their thirst. The birds of the sky nest by the waters. They sing among the branches. He waters the mountains from his upper chambers. The land is satisfied by the fruit of his work. He makes grass grow for the cattle and plants for people to cultivate, bringing forth food from the earth. Wine that gladdens humans' hearts, all to make their faces shine, and bread that sustains their hearts. The trees of the Lord are well watered, the cedars of Lebanon that he planted. There are birds that make their nests. The stark has home in the junipers. The high mountains belong to the wild goats. The crags are refuge to, for the high racks. He made the moon to mark the seasons, and the sun knows when to go down. You bring darkness, it becomes night and all the beasts of the forest prowl, and the lions roar from the, for their prey, and seek their food from God. The sun rises, and they steal away. They return and lie down in their dens. Then people go out to their work, to their labor, until, until evening. How many are your works, Lord? In wisdom you made them all. The earth is full of your creatures. There is the sea, vast and spacious, teeming with creatures beyond number living things both large and small. There are ships to go to and forth, and Leviathan, which you form to frolic there. All creatures look to you to give them their food at the proper time. When you give it to them, they gather it up. When you open your hand, they are satisfied with good things. When you hide your face, they are terrified. When you take away their breath, they die and return to the dust. And when you send your spirit, they are created, and you renew the face of the ground. Very good. Thank you. Stay right there. Okay. So now it says, take the time to explore the idea that creation itself points people to God. Even if you don't have a Bible or anything to read, it's evidence that there is a living, powerful intelligent creator, right? If you think about it, this may be more time to think about creation than you ever had, is to just think about all those things that she talked about, things that we never even thought about. But it all leads back to God. He created it, and what did he do? He created it for you to think of him when you see it. Most of us, we just admire and go on. But he wants you to think of him every time you see it. You think, oh, that is awesome. Thank you, God. You are explaining to me how you work in me based on how you work in creation. You explain to me about storms. You explain to me about clouds. Well, you explain that a storm can wipe out everything that you hold dear. But if God is in control... He can put it back, right? You explain that the clouds can roll away and the storms can roll away, and what's, it, what's left after that? Come on, speak up. What's left? Peace. Your trials may be in storms, but storms pass. Clouds pass, right? Okay, that's evidence of the creator. All right, 104, 31 to 35. May the glory of the Lord endure forever. May the Lord rejoice in his works. He who looks at the earth and it trembles, who touches the mountains and they smoke. I will sing to the Lord all my life. I will sing praise to my God as long as I live. May my meditation be pleasing to him as I rejoice in the Lord. But many sinners vanish from the earth and the wicked will be no more. Praise the Lord, my soul. Praise the Lord. Okay. Thank you. Very good. Okay, I have my last few questions. How do you respond to God when you think about how he has created you and all the ways he has blessed you? Hmm? I'm sorry? I can't hear you. I'm sure they can't either. Praise and sing? Okay. Worship him. Does it humble you a little bit when you think of all he's done to you, how he's blessed you? Amen. Okay. 
How does that affect the way that you approach challenges in your life? He knows that you're going to take, I know that he's going to take care of the situation. Uh, give me the means to get it done. Um, and I, I'm faithful and I'm brave um, when it's going to happen. Because I know that if it came to me, it was for me, and he expects me to do it. Thank you. Anybody else on this side? You look like you got something. Piggybacking on her trust. <laughs> That he brought you to it, he's going to bring you through it. Amen. All right. On this side, as when I was in the hospital, the Lord told me um, when I was going through all my surgeries and everything, I got you. And he also told me, be quiet. I got you. Listen, I got you. Don't have to do anything. You don't have to say anything. And even the doctors were amazed. I had a stroke on a Saturday. On a Sunday, Easter Sunday, I was right back in my right mind. Mm. On that Saturday before, they asked me my name. They asked me the year. I couldn't think of anything. I couldn't say it. I broke down and cried because I didn't even know the day I was born. I didn't even know who I was, and I didn't know why. I didn't, they didn't ask me to put out my hands. They didn't ask me to hold my hand up. They didn't look at my face. It wasn't crooked. My mind just went, and then they found out I had a stroke. That Easter Sunday of this year, a doctor, a neurologist came in, and he said, oh, she's a very highly intelligent woman because I knew my name. I knew where I was. I can tell them the day without trying to cheat and look at the band on my arm. And it was nothing but God. God showed me that night how he had taken care of me. And not just me, how he takes care of all his children that come to him. He loves us that much that he has it in control even when we think we're falling apart and there's nothing left. God is still mighty and on the throne. And the only thing he wants us to do is trust him. Amen. 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 Back here. How do you, how does this affect the challenges that you have in your life, somebody? When I think about the trials and the tribulations that I've encountered or I have helped people with theirs, the first thing, first and foremost in my mind, even in my weakest time, I go, wait a minute, I am fiercely and wonderfully made. I am the child of a king. When my daddy roars, the world stops. He takes care of me. He holds me in the bosom of Abraham. And he said, fear not. It's like you said, I got you. I got this. If you would just move yourself out of the way and stop trying to run things and let me be your father, you will learn to trust me. And when you learn to trust me, like I keep telling you to, then you can go out and you can spread that and show other people in their weakest hour. Look what he did for Donna. Look what he did for me. I'm the child of a king. I'm not bragging, but that's what God wants me to share. And that's what he says, hide that in your heart. Because when you can do that, I have given you the knowledge and the wisdom and the power because it's Jesus over everything. See, I learned, see, you thought I was sleeping in class, didn't you? Mm -mm. I, that's how you get over those trials and those tribulations. Even in your weakest, you can still say, but look at my father. Look who loves me. Amen. Anybody else? 
can go through, talk about how they got through challenges or can go through challenges now that they know that God, if he created everything, he's in control of you too. He can get you out of your challenges. Okay. Run McLean. that as I think about storms and all those things that occur, I think about God only lets it happen for a little while. I mean, it could keep going on and on and on, but he only lets it happen for a little while. And that's like with us. Whatever our storm is, whatever our situation is, he only lets it happen for a little while. And then he cleans it. Well, he, he allows us to work together and clean things up. And I think about that in regards to nature, how things happen where it could just keep going, rain and rain, and never stop. But he doesn't do that to us just for a little while. And then the sun comes right back out. That's right. That's right. Amen. Give everybody a hand. You guys have been fantastic. Thank you. All right. Bless the Lord. Whew. That was good. That was good. Okay. We are almost to our time of closing. But I just want to say this, um, that God wants us to enjoy the same type of personal relationship with him that David did. Um, and so, therefore, we're going to continue on growing this relationship with him for the rest of the week. And through that relationship, there is one, well, a couple of important things. But the main thing in having that relationship for Christ, with Christ, there's God's plan for salvation, if you look at page two in your booklet, how many people still don't have a booklet? Oh, wow. Okay. Let me see. Yeah, turn that around for me, please. I'm going to walk through God's plan for salvation. It says, how can you know for sure you will spend eternity with God? Here's what the Bible says. This is so close to my heart for many, many years um, as a work with decision time counseling, also with being a hospice chaplain. Um, I walk in the doors of people who are dying. They may not die that moment. They may die two months, three months, a year. And I walked in a house uh, a couple weeks ago and um, I was talking to the lady, and I was asking her, did she know the Lord as her Savior? And she was like, mm, no, my mom was Jehovah Witness, but she never said what she was. I said, so if you would die tonight, do you know where you're going? She said, no, very casually. I said, if Jesus was standing in front of you and said, what, how, what would you do, what must I do to let you into my kingdom, what would you say? She said, I don't know. I said, do you want to have a relationship with Christ? Not right now. My heart dropped. Because this lady is really at that point where she could die tomorrow. So I said, okay, I'm going to come back and I'm going to see you in a couple of weeks. But let me tell you a little bit about God's plan for salvation. God's power. It tells us that for I am not ashamed of the gospel because it is the power of God for salvation to everyone who believes. She doesn't understand his power because she doesn't believe. God is the power, the source, and the reward in salvation. Because we are powerless in our sin. And God steps in and rescues us. Our problem, she had a problem. She doesn't know Christ. For all have sinned and fall short of the glory of God. That's Romans 3 and 23. Sin means missing the mark and falling short of perfection. 
How many of us in here are perfect? Because of our imperfection, we cannot stand before a holy God. And oh my God, there is a punishment, our punishment. For the wages of sin is death. But the gift, the gift of God is eternal life. In Jesus Christ, our Lord, that's Romans 6 and 23. Sin separates us from God and sentences us to death. One thing I used to always ask, what did you get for your 20th birthday? Do you remember? Anybody remember? What did you get for your 10th birthday? What did you get for the 58th birthday? You don't remember. But I bet if I ask you, do you remember where you were or what situation it was when you received Jesus as your Lord and Savior? Do you remember? What a gift. Because it was so important to you. God's provision. But God provides his own love for us in that while we are still sinners, he knows everything we're going to do, everything we have done, everything we're going to do tomorrow, how we're going to say it tomorrow, next week, five years from now, he still died for us, Romans 5 and 8. Though we deserve eternal death, God has made a way, a way for us to be rescued through the sacrifice of his son, Jesus. Rescue means saved from danger, keep from being lost or abandoned. God's promise, his promise are true. If you confess with your mouth, Jesus is Lord, and believe in your heart that God raised him from the dead, you will be saved. That's Romans 10 and 9. To confess Jesus as Lord means we agree. We're not contemplating. We're not thinking. We're not guessing. We agree with God about our sins. Lord, I sin. You're right. I did it. I said it. I thunk it. Agree with God about our sin and need for salvation. We have a need to be saved. We have a need to be rescued from ourselves. Because you know we are our worst enemies. We must repent and trust only in the work of Jesus to save us. He's our savior. Repent means to turn away from it and don't go back. You keep on walking. You keep on moving. You don't go back to that sin. He's not calling us to be perfect, but to be holy. Salvation is a process. It's, it's not a one-time event. It's a lifelong of being continually shaped into the people God intends us to be. Every day is a new day. Every day is a different day. Do we know what it's going to bring? No. But if you call on the name of Jesus, he said in his word, he would never leave us nor forsake us. And so if you don't have a relationship with Christ, you can get one. Does everyone in here have a relationship with Christ? Praise the Lord. That's good news. That is good news. So today we learn that God chose David because he was a man after God's heart. Because he had a relationship with God. David responded to his observations of the universe with praise and wonder toward, toward God. When David sinned, he knew that he could turn to God and ask for forgiveness and receive pardon and redemption. And a lot of times while we were so caught up on what we were caught up on, because we don't believe in forgiveness. Because if we did, we would forgive ourselves and then we would forgive others. 
and we wouldn't be so messed up in doing some of the things that we're doing or thinking or believing because we've already sat down with our Father and said, you know, Lord, I messed up. I thought the wrong thing. I said the wrong thing. Please forgive me. And you know what he does? He forgives us. Because the word also tells us if I don't forgive others, he won't forgive me. And I don't want to have to go before him with an sorry excuse. Well, you know, Lord, she said it first to me and I just, I just went there with her. No, it doesn't work like that. So God has a plan of salvation. Share it with your family. Share it with your friends. Let them know that he is real. He's a real God. And that he looks on the heart. So in closing, it is 8.59. Um, our verse for today, what was it? Uh, Ephesians. It's on Ephesians. This is our mechanical box. It spins by itself when, when you're not in front of it. For we are his workmanship, created in Christ Jesus for good works, good works, good works, which God prepared ahead of time for us to do. So when we see all this stuff that's not of God, we need to be praying. Because like I always tell my children, it's no way that they know Christ. If we're killing and we're stealing and we're shooting and we're beating and we're cussing and, and we're carrying on, that's not of God. And I want to share it. Each year when we have Vacation Bible, uh, Adventure Week, I always share books that I'm reading. And I was dealing with a lot. I've been dealing with a lot like we all do. And a lot of times we don't know the names of what we're dealing with or we do know the names of what we're dealing with. We just don't know how to deal with it. Or we haven't accepted the fact that that's what we're dealing with. And I have this book by John Eckhart. And it's called Demon Hit List. And it talks about the names of the things that we deal with. Abandonment. It talked about that. It said that God will rescue us. Abandonment is not of God. And so it also talks about um, gluttony. Uh, gluttony with the fact where self-pity, self-reward. It talks about competition. It talks about condemnation, we being our own enemies. It talked about being foolish. It talked about fighting. It talked about cursing. It talked about being impulsive. It talked about incest. All those things that are not of God. And so... As we are praying and on today, tonight, and tomorrow, and before you come back next, or tomorrow, ask God to search your heart and show you those things that's in you that's not supposed to be there so that we can have a deeper, loving relationship with him. Amen? Do we have any prayer requests? Any prayer requests? Everybody good? Okay, for peace, for strength, for focus on what he can do. You know, he can even heal. I've seen miracles. Anyone else? Yes. For your family? Okay, you lost your brother. Okay. For comfort, yes. Anyone else? Okay. Yes, ma'am. Okay. Okay. Anyone else? Yes, ma'am. Children.
Yes. 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 I just wrote a curriculum on suicide prevention on the armor of God. If you know anything about the armor of God, you have to put on a full armor of God. The helmet, the breastplate. Anyone else? And you know, sometimes we just got to dig in that word for ourselves and ask God what scripture, what prayer, where to send you. And we will have to become those prayer warriors for ourselves. And we'll do that. Would you like to pray? Let's stand. No, I'll let you stand. Okay. Let's all stand. <clears throat> Dear most high God, our Lord, our Savior, our Father, we give you praise on tonight, Lord, for your lesson, Lord. Lord, we want to be after your heart, Lord. We want to know you and love on you and serve you and honor you. But most of all, Father, we want to do what you have created us to do, and that is to worship you, Lord. Through our worship, Father, right now, in the name of Jesus, we are just asking through our worship that we cover those who are going through family issues, Father, through heartache of loss of family members, Lord through loss of limbs, Lord, through loss of friendships, Lord, through loss in all areas of our life, Father. Father, we need a healing right now in the name of Jesus to this country, to this kingdom, your kingdom, Father. This is your kingdom. It belongs to you. We need a healing right now in the name of Jesus, Lord. We're asking that you go and you touch our children, Lord. She's asking that the preachers and the deacons and all of them come together and Pray for our children, but it starts at home. We got to start at home, Lord. And so, Father, we pray right now, Father, that your will will be done in all our lives, Father. We ask that you would give us desires of our hearts, Father. But we know that we need to be lined up for, with you, Lord. We thank you for your son, Jesus, dying on the cross for our sins so that we can be free, Lord. We thank you that we continue to move towards salvation, Lord, because we are imperfect, Lord. We are not perfect beings. So we thank you for what you're going to do in all our lives on tonight, Lord. We thank you for tra safe, um, tra safe travel to our destination, Lord. We thank you for the healing of our parents, Lord. We thank you for the healing of ourselves, Lord. We thank you that we came here tonight, Lord, to get a word from you, Father. So, Father, we just ask that you continue to bless this uh, adventure week, Lord. Bless our directors. Bless each and every work, Lord. Thank you for our pastor, Father, for the many years that he's given us the authority to go forth and teach a word during this whole week, Lord. We ask that you bless each and every person that is here, Lord. Bless their lives, Father. Give them the desires of their hearts, Father. You know what each and every person here need, Lord. So we thank you in advance for what you've done and what you're going to already do. In the mighty name of Jesus, we pray. Amen. Amen. Be blessed. Good night. Now, tomorrow we will be in the Prince Chapel. Chapel. That's over here was just for today. We will be back in the Prince Chapel tomorrow. And if you're signed up for uh, another class, you can go to that class tomorrow. Thank, Thank you. you.